So what does that love even mean that that saying I love you? If I am okay to put my interest before the other person, if I'm okay to care about myself, if I'm okay for the other person to struggle and uh, gasp and all I want is my comfort, is it love? If you love something, care for it. Neglect will make it go bad eventually. In the first level of consciousness, you're attached to things. In the second level of consciousness, you're attached to people. And you're attached to those people who you think uh, you love or whom you think you love. At the highest level of consciousness, you realize that the only emotion worth harboring is love. That if there was, if these 10 emotions or aspects of human existence, if they were like stains on a cloth, the only detergent that would wash them all is love. Every other thing is a treatment of some sort. It's so incredibly powerful, love, that it's the only way to transform somebody. I mean, temporary transformation can be handled with a stick, but love is the only emotion that you can have if you want to bring about lasting transformation in anyone at all. You've just got to be utterly patient, very respectful, because I always say that if there is no care, if there is no respect, if there is no appreciation, it is not love. What does it even mean when people say, I love you? What does that mean? I love you. Can you give me a glass of water? I really love you. Can you make a meal for me? I really love you. Can you go wash my clothes? I really love you. Can you do my bed? I love you, but uh, can you lend me some money? I love you. Your dad is, is bad. I love you, but your mother, she gives me the shits. And <laughs> things like that. What does that mean, I love you? And uh, in today's post, I've quoted this uh, Finnish book called uh, Sishu, or whatever it's supposed to pronounce, pronounced as. There they make a very beautiful point in that book. They say that the Finnish are, uh, apparently it's the happiest country in the world now. Earlier it used to be Denmark. But I think too much dairy did no good to them. <laughs> so the, uh, those, the Finnish guys I, I read in that book, they are very frugal with their words. Which means you, are, you tend to be more sincere with your words. Today, I mean, husband and wife, in every phone call, they say, I love you, honey, love you, honey. In every email, say, love you, love you, right? In every SMS, they'll make those hearts and things, I love you and love you. I mean, women do that more than men. Uh, so, but what does that mean? That means we, it's, we've merely turned it into an expression. This couple was walking down the road, they were a little elderly, and... Um, and they see another young couple passionately kissing. And the wife goes, why don't you ever do that? He says, honey, I don't even know that woman. <laughs> How can I do that? So what does that love even mean, that, that saying, I love you? If I am okay to put my interest before the other person, if I'm okay to care about myself, if I'm okay for the other person to struggle and uh, gasp, and all I want is my comfort, is it love? I don't think so. There were these devotees in Iskon in Sydney that migrated from England, and they, one of them used to, to tell me, there were two sisters, one of them used to say that her husband, she said, whenever we go out, 
and he always says uh, oh you know my back hurts can you sleep on the floor and i can sleep on the bed that's a man what kind of a eunuch will do something like this in if it doesn't give you courage it's not love because love makes you strong it makes you stronger not weaker and that is the key difference between love and attachment attachment makes you weak and love makes you strong this husband said to his wife i just recall he said honey you know that you are my strength right i really love you and you are my strength oh so she said uh, are you telling me other women are your weakness <laughs> no offense but a woman's mind can be like that she can think whatever she likes she has that luxury <laughs> anyway so attachment weakens you but love strengthens you if you feel more courageous if you feel like more settled you are in love if you feel restless if you feel unsettled you have either a strong infatuation or you just have uh, attachment deep attachment that you're mistaking for love love is supposed to stabilize you love is supposed to give you that sense of peace and belonging and grounding and when there is love it's pretty much a synonym of liberation when meera discovered her love she was liberated when chaitanya mahaprabhu discovered his he was liberated when ramakrishna paramhansa discovered his love he was liberated when christ discovered his he was liberated love is emancipation love is liberation while you are still alive attachment is a cage there is no attachment without ego the more ego you have the greater attached you are to whatever it is that you may be either things or people or both you ego is the gauge it's the it's the meter that shows how attached you are going to be when ego is very high the only thing that happens is people shift their attachment the attachment never goes away it only changes its focus it's like if you're holding uh, a but um, you know a pair of binoculars in your um, hands wherever you will look there is going to be some picture you are not looking at binoculars you're looking through binoculars in attachment you are looking at if you're attached to you, even your guru you're looking at guru at your guru at the guru but if you are sincere about your path you're looking through your guru you're trying to see the world through his or her eyes so whenever you feel you are in love ask yourself am i settled am i at peace do i deeply care about that about the thing or people or cause or person that i love and life then feels very complete <laughs>